Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear brother. The message reads like this, Hello brother Nanshi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? You can call me Solomon, not my real name, and I am a migrant from Zim, and I am currently living in Bumalang here in South Africa. I came here seeking a better life, hoping to find work, and each and every time that I'll get something, I would always send the money back to my family. But what I found was something that was much more darker than I could have ever imagined. I was desperate. I don't want to lie to you. And in my desperation, that is when I did something which is very evil. And this thing, it haunts me each and every single day. And I wish that God will just forgive me. And I wish the relatives of that woman will also forgive me because some of them, they found out that the grave of their relative had been dug up. When I first arrived in Bumalang, work was hard to come by. I started working for this other man who had a brickyard. While least I was working for him, it was always trouble for me because the police will always come and then they would raid in that location. And then we had to go into hiding. So this man, he then saw that this was an opportunity for him to hire and fire. So what he will do is that you would work maybe for two months. And in those two months, you will say that, okay, I'll give you the money on such and such a date. And on the day when you're supposed to get paid, then this man will say, okay, you can sit here. Then you would call the police. Then you would see those kumba kumbas coming and then you will be collected. As for me, I was always escaping. And then I stopped working for that man. And I was living in a crowded shack because I did not have the money to rent my own shack. So I was living in a crowded shack with my other brothers who are also from Zim. We were just barely scraping by. So we would go to the robots trying to find some peace jobs until one day, while least I was at the robot, I was the first one on that day to arrive at the place where we used to market. Then there was this other man who had a very beautiful car. He stopped his car and he then got out of the car. He was like looking around and then he approached me because I was just sitting down and I don't want to lie to you. I was so hungry on that day, just wishing that there was someone who would just give me 10 rand, buy some bread buy some bread and then I'll just eat. This man, he was well dressed and he had an air of authority that made me to feel like I was nothing in this world. He said that he wanted me to work for him and he was looking for someone who could help him. So I jumped up onto my feet and he told me that if I could work with him, then I was never going to come back to the robot to market again. And I jumped into his car. When I jumped into his car, he kept on telling me that he was connected to a lot of powerful people, politicians even, he said. And he told me that if I was going to do him a favor, he could ensure that I can even get some documentation here in South Africa and I will be able to have a steady income. So desperation then clouded my judgment. I did not know that this man, he just wanted to use me. When you are a migrant in a foreign country, the moment that someone offers you a chance to to be legally documented in that country, you will do anything. So I did not ask too many questions, did not even think about the consequences. All that I could think about was the money that I could send back home to my wife and to my children. So when he asked me to meet him late one night, that was when I agreed. His driver then came and picked me up and he drove with me to the edge of the graveyard and on that night they were hiding under the cover of darkness and I met him and a few other men then they then handed me a shovel then we walked and they laid me to a grave and they said that they were going to wait for me whilst they will be sitting at this other restaurant they said that they did not want the police to see what was going on then they gave me a phone that i was supposed to con to use to contact him after i would have finished the job they led me to that grave gave me a shovel and the man explained that the grave belonged to the to his wife 
and she had passed away a few months earlier and he did not tell me why they wanted the body and I was even afraid to ask. My hands trembled as I began to dig. I did not even have any light. They said that do not switch on the torch on this phone otherwise someone is going to catch you. Just do everything in total darkness. The silence brother Nashi in the graves it was really opp oppressive and it was tormenting me each and every time. The only sound that I could hear was when I'll be hitting the ground with the shovel. After what felt like hours and hours, that was when I finally reached the coffin. When I had reached the coffin, the smell, brother Nashi, yo, the smell was just too much. That was when I got out of the grave because there was no more network. And then I called the guy. He told me that they were coming from the pub grill where they were having some drinks then they came and they drove their cars but whilst they were they were driving into the graveyard all of the cars headlights had been switched off that was when they told me to get back into the grave but i was now assisted by one who seemed to be like his personal bodyguard we then went into the grave then we opened up the coffin when we opened the coffin inside they lay a woman she was still dressed in the fine clothes that she had been buried in but it was really smelly and this woman she had already decayed i was told to remove the corpse and my brother when i was doing this i wanted to scream i wanted to scream in fear but i told myself to stop to do what i was told i told myself that even if this man if they wanted to kill me there was no one who was going to look for me for i was in a foreign country without any papers we lifted a body out of the coffin and then the men quickly wrapped her in a blanket and took her away and then they told me that they were going to come and collect me. Then I started filling up the grave again and then they had told me the place where I was supposed to wait for them but outside of the graveyard and when they came back this man he was driving a very beautiful black Mercedes Benz and then he handed me a stack of money and he told me that there was another guy that was going to come and collect me so that I can be left in a place which was very safe they had already booked a room for me so after that, then they came another bodyguard who came and picked me up and took me to this other guest house with all the money that I had. I was then told that it was a, a much wiser decision for me to leave the country to return back to my country. So with the money that I had, I then went back and... So with the money that I had, the next thing that I did next morning, I went into town and bought some clothes and a bag and I then returned back to Zim. With that money, I was able to renovate my house, but quickly the money was finished. I then returned back to South Africa and when I returned back, I started to struggle again and then... One night when I had returned back from this other peace job, that was when I saw the spirit of that woman. And ever since that night, I have been having a lot of nightmares. And these dreams that I have, Brother Nashi, they are quite disturbing. Each and every night when this woman visits me, she just says to me, come, follow me. There is a place where I want, where I want to go with you and when i look at her if her eyes will be full of anger and i will be shaking because of the way that she is so scary and when she takes me she goes with me into the graveyard that same graveyard where i dug up her body and then she'll say dig you have to dig so what happens is that each and every night i dig up her dead body and then after i'll have done that then she will say i want you to dig then i dig again so this thing it makes me to feel as if i am crazy because even when i am waking sometimes i can hear her whispering my name accusing me of disturbing her when she was resting in in her grave and as for now one thing that i can tell you is that my health my health is deteriorating and ever since that night i have been losing weight sometimes i can just wake up and see that someone would have cut my hair not like a big piece just a small piece so this has been giving me a lot of sleepless nights i have tried to move to escape her presence but wherever i go to she follows me and as for me to return back to zim without a plan i can't i feel as if i am stuck in this country 
Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear brother. Strange things indeed do happen in this world. Just imagine digging up someone's grave. Your 